rhythm to creative bits. Hey everybody, Christian Gabriel here, and I am back for another tutorial. Today we're going to look at Motion Sketch in After Effects 2022. Motion Sketch allows you to create pathways for your objects to animate across. For example, if I wanted to take, let's say, an object like a rocket and make it go across the screen, I could do that. Let's just go ahead and go right to it here. I have this background right here. It's locked down because I don't want it moving around, and then I'm going to go ahead Ahead and drag this little rocket into my timeline and I would like to animate this rocket uh, across the screen I could hand animate this and that could get a little funky I could just take the rocket here go ahead and hit P for position and then turn on my position keyframes right there and then maybe just move it forward a little bit, move it forward. This is very primitive, by the way. I would not suggest this. Uh, a lot of people do. And of course you get this sort of uh, uh, kind of funky little pathway here. Now, I'm not saying you can't achieve great things with this. Of course you can, but there are easier ways. So let me undo this. Now that I'm back at the beginning, I got my rocket here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring up the motion sketch panel that exists in window and then down to motion sketch and if you turn it on right there there it is there's our beautiful motion sketch after activating the motion sketch panel you have to select whatever object or layer you wish to animate and that will activate all the features of motion sketch so let's say i want to take this rocket and animate it across the screen well, you probably want to start off screen and end off screen with something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and animate this rocket. Now, before I do that, because I'm going to start off screen with this rocket, I'm going to go ahead and change my magnification ratio. Sounds uh, so serious there and switch it to about 50%. And I don't really need to mess with my rocket at all. As long as the layer is selected, I could go back to capture right here. Now let's take a look at a few of the properties in motion capture. First off, we have capture speed and it says 100%. So this allows us to increase or decrease that capture speed. And there's a number of things we can do in more advanced tutorials. We could uh, really kind of uh, do a lot of fun things with that. So smoothing will smooth out the pathways of your object. If you don't have a very high smoothing, what will happen is you'll have a lot of keyframes. That's a little rough. If you're trying to animate across a smooth path, you want the fewest keyframes possible. And so what I wanna do is maybe bring this up to about maybe, let's try 32. Maybe I want more, but 32 is fine for right now. You can also, while you're working with Motion Sketch, you can have that background on or off. That can help you draw that path a little better, such as if I wanted to draw the path between the planets. Okay, if I don't have background selected, then you'll just see the object and not the background. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, flip on the background just so I have that as a reference. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start capture. When I click on start capture, what happens is that you will get a little crosshairs here and all you have to do is start off screen here and then click and start to draw your path. So you can see I can draw my path just like so, something like that. As soon as I let that go, my path is now created. My perfect little path there. And you can see my rocket looks a little weird. We'll start flying across that path automatically. Now something that will improve this is that we could make your rocket kind of auto-orient itself to the path. But before we do that, uh, some things I would recommend is to try and get your anchor point in the middle of the rocket. Not the flame here, but the middle of the rocket. Just so it has a point of where you would like it to turn and pivot, basically. So I'm gonna go select the rocket layer and hit A for anchor point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move my anchor points around here and you'll see it won't screw up the position. Remember, anchor point's not position, you're moving the object to the anchor point. 
so you see and now I should have probably done this before it would have been a lot easier but that's okay all right and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up rotation so that's going to be R for rotation there it is and then I could go ahead and scrub the second rotation value until my rocket is kind of you know aligning itself kind of to the pathway right there now the final piece to this is make sure you have rocket selected in your timeline or the object selected and then you're gonna go up to layer and then transform and then auto orient this is the magic uh, dust right here that will help your rocket align itself to the path from beginning to end so if I just go ahead and select auto orient and I say orient along path and I say okay now you'll see it kind of jitters a little bit if I go back to the beginning here and play that your rocket will now fly across that path looks a little weird I won't lie uh, very South Park ish uh, going on there uh, remember we can speed this up or slow it down anytime we want you don't have to go back and recreate all of the elements there uh, if you wanted to speed it up or slow down, how would we do that? Well, you could do it one of uh, two or three ways. You could go down to the bottom here and click on this little expand or collapse the in-out duration stretch panes panel. Uh, and when you do that, that will give you stretch here. And of course, you just go to the layer you want and you can scrub by click dragging uh, stretch or duration. Uh, that that could be possible the other thing you could do you could actually turn on reveal keyframes uh, remember how we reveal keyframes that is the U key if you hit the U key that will bring up all properties on a layer that have keyframes and there they are beautiful now all we have to do is we want to select all the keyframes the easiest way to do that is either lassoing so we can click out in the gray and then just quickly go over and it will just select those keyframes. They'll turn blue, that's how you know they're selected. Uh, the other way to select keyframes is to click on the property name. So position, if I click on the name position, there it is. All your keyframes will be selected. Now, if you're on Windows, you hold down the Alt key. If you're on Mac, you hold down the Option key. And then you grab the end keyframe here and you could just drag that out so this is option alt click drag basically a keyframe and i'm now keeping the dynamics between those keyframes but i'm just speeding them all up and all down uniformly so that's how that works there so if i want to speed it up i could go ahead and bring that in just a little bit closer like there all right nice if i go ahead and play that there it goes definitely south park uh, but of course, you could go in if you like on position and you could manipulate the path by hand. Simply uh, click on a point. Now, if all the points are selected, it's better if you click off and then you can click uh, back on. Now, you don't want to, if you just want to click one of the little points, you can click on the keyframes themselves. So if I just click here, I could just kind of move this up. That'll give me a little bit smoother better performance here there we go something like that it's not perfect but all right we're back now and I redid the motion path but this time I had smoothness of one you could see this whole line here is just too many keyframes going on here now let's say you did this and you go well I don't want to redo it because I really like the way I drew it but you want to reduce the amount of keyframes now you can do this with any animation if you want to reduce the number of the keyframes for the point of making everything smoother, this is how you would do it. You could go up to the top here, click on window, and then down to smoother. So the smoother is in just an all purpose smoothing, very much like the smoother in motion sketch, but this is after the fact. And once again, all I have to do is just uh, move this up, switch tolerance to let's say 32 because I want to smooth this out here. Maybe I want to smooth it out even more. Maybe I'll make it 40 here, right? And then I'm going to reveal my keyframes, U. So I selected rocket, hit U on my keyboard there. I'm going to select on position and hit apply. And you'll see it really smoothed those keyframes out to a beautiful 
those nice smooth curves. That's the secret. Oh, look how horrible that looks. That Now that looks pretty silly. That looks pretty silly right there. Once again, what we would have to do, I uh, want to remind you is anchor point. We could bring the anchor point down here, just slide it over, make sure it's somewhat centered. And then R for rotation, there we go. Just align that and remember with your layer selected, we would go up to layer and that would be transform and then auto orient. Orient along path is what you wanna select and then okay, there it is. Once again, if it shifts around a little bit, that's okay. You could always just reorient it there. Now if I play that, that should be a lot smoother. There we go, look how beautiful that is. All right, that's it. Uh, that was Motion Sketch. That's kind of a quick down and dirty overview on it. I'm trying to get these tutorials to be a lot shorter and smaller. Uh, there's more advanced techniques using expressions that I can go into much later on. A lot more uh, amazing things you can do with this tool. Uh, just as a last minute, some parting advice here. You need to know that Motion Sketch is only for 2D layers. So if you're thinking, hey, I want to animate a camera across it, it's not that direct. There's other ways we can create a camera path. Uh, we can even trick this particular path into becoming a camera path. But Motion Sketch itself is for 2D layers only. All right, that's it. I want to thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.